never fails, never gives up, never runs out on me. Your love, your love, your love. You are awesome in this place, mighty God. You are awesome in this place, our Father. You are worthy of all praise. To you our lives we raise. You are awesome in this place, mighty As I come into your presence, past the gates of praise, into your sanctuary, till we're standing face to face, I look upon your countenance, I see the fullness of your grace, and I can only bow down and say, you are awesome in this place, mighty God. You are awesome in this place, our Father. You are worthy of all praise. To you our lives we raise. You are awesome in this place, mighty God. You are awesome in this place, mighty God. You are awesome in this place, our Father. You are worthy of all praise. To you our lives we raise. You are awesome in this place, mighty God. On holy ground, and I know that there are angels all around. Let us pray.
Yes, yes, yes. I have called your altar holy. You have sanctified it before me, and I have called your altar holy. And every time you stand at this altar, holiness becomes yours. It's open and welcome to you. The places in you that are dark, the places in you that are wicked, when you stand at this altar, holiness will come upon you, and you will be cleansed. You will be cleansed by my blood. When you stand before me and you bow before me, cleansing will come. It will come in ways you can't do in your private time because I've called this altar holy, and my holiness resides here in this altar. Come to this altar. Receive, receive, receive. Some of you feel ripped and torn. Some of you feel ripped and torn as if something has been ripped inside of you and your wound is great. Ripped, torn, cannot be healed by natural means. The healer's here. The healer's here. I will heal you from every rip, every tear, every soul tie that needs to be broken. I will set you free. Surrender, surrender, surrender. It's your choice. It's your choice, my daughters, my sons. It's your choice. I cannot make you surrender. But when you surrender, I can make you. I can make you the woman and the man you're called to be. But you must surrender. Trust me. I mean you no evil. I mean you no evil. I will heal you. I will deliver you. I will place you in a place you have never been before. And those of you who desire adventures, oh my Come with me. Come with me. Father, we truly thank you this day that your presence is very strong in our midst. We thank you, Father, for who you are to us. We are so grateful, and we are thankful that in your presence is every need supplied. You have called to us today. We have praised and worshiped you and you have called to us today. And may we each, as we need to, surrender to that call. Because in your presence is everything we need. And we're grateful that we are together, gathered together in your name. We are Christ followers and we have gathered together in your name. And you are in our midst. And we are grateful today. We're grateful today. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Continue, continue to worship and praise. And as we just go forth to the word of God and what he has for us this day through his word. Nothing like being in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. There's just nothing like it. Thank you, Father. Amen. So sweet. Thank you, Jesus. And to know that he's cleansing and healing yes. us. And he is dealing with the hearts. He's, he's been, you know, with that with me. And and uh, I read a, a prophet from a woman that prophesies that the Lord connected me with. And that was the very thing she was had put out this morning, was how the Lord was going into our hearts, into the hurtful, 
dark, painful places so he can heal us and heal them wounds and cleanse us and bring us more closer and freer to him. So this, what was spoken, Molly, is just confirmation of what Lana Vassar had said and, and what he has spoken to us in our prayer mornings on Friday morning. So, Father, we thank you. We thank you. So, this morning, I just want to take a little bit of time. I want to say thanks again for Brother and Sister Addis coming. As you know, they're with the uh, American Indian Ministries. They've been here before. I had a privilege about four years ago now to go out on the reservation with them on a mission trip. And I think about it often. I really do. I think I have really good memories of whenever I was out there with y'all and that. And it is just something that I treasure, you know, and glad I did it. I know it was of God. Um, so anyhow, this morning he's going to be speaking. And thank you, before I forget, all you that came last night and brought your food and helped and everything. We thank you for coming, and hopefully y'all, everybody enjoyed it. And at uh, this time, Sister Addis is going to come and uh, sing a song, and then Brother Addis will come and speak for us. God be the glory. Hallelujah. I would rather be in the presence of one or two in the presence of God. And in a church with 10,000. And he's not welcome. Oh, Jesus. You're such a sweet spirit. There's always such a sweet spirit. Praise God. You know, the Lord is stirring. The Spirit is stirring. And there's going to be houses of God that He's going to send people to where His Spirit is welcome, where His Spirit is welcome to move where his spirit is abiding. And this is going to be one of those places. Hurting people coming in. Hurting people needing the Lord. God is so good. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. something you'd never have to fight but I did say I'd be right there by your side and I did say I'll always help you fight cause you know I made a promise that I intend to keep my grace will be sufficient in every time of need. My love will be the anchor that you can hold on to. This is the promise. This is the promise 
said that friends would never turn their back on you or that the world around you wouldn't see you as a fool but I did say like me you'll surely be despised and I did say my ways confound the wise I didn't say you'd never taste the bitter kiss of death Or have to walk through chilly Jordan to enter into rest But I did say I'd be waiting right on the other side And I did say I'll dry every tear you cry Cause you know I've made a promise That I've prepared a place And someday sooner than you think You'll see me face to face And you'll sing with the angels And the countless folks too This is the promise This is the promise I've made to you Let this be your light That hell can't separate us You're gonna make it through This is a promise This is a promise I've made to you Oh, this is the promise This is the promise I've made to you about you but we're having church yes. amen yes. glory 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 praise the Lord like what my wife said where two or three are gathered in his name he is in the midst and whether we want to accept that <clears throat> excuse me or not that's up to us but I believe this morning we've accepted that yes. amen and he's in this place and he's here to do a work amongst his people and we just need to give him praise. Amen. Let's just, just worship him and thank him that he's here this morning. And he's got a purpose for you being here. <clears throat> Amen. Glory. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. I've got a little video I want to show real quickly. 
and I, I've got a message, and I've got, I, 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 I don't want to take too long with some of this presentation, but I also want God to, I, I was praying there just a minute ago, and God, you know why I'm here. People know why I'm here. But God, this is your service. Let everything that's being done bring praise and glory and honor to your name. I, I, don't, I don't have to be seen or heard or, or anything, just as long as you show up. Yeah. Amen in our midst. And so through this video, I want you to see some things that took place last year on the reservation, Swim Ministries. our bishop.
We just give the Lord a hand clap. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You were part of that. Amen. You were part of that. And what's taking place and what's taking place on the reservation at SWIM Ministries. And uh, I just thank God for it. Some of the things in this video are kind of comical. The one boy that was yelling out, ow, ow, ow. If you've ever been out there, there's something that's called a goat head. It's worse than any sand spur or anything you'll find in Florida. And it actually came through the sole of his sandal. And that's why he was hollering and jumping around. They can cause you much pain. Uh, but uh, the kids being baptized, uh, things that happened. There's two things that stand out in the groups that came last year that really touched our heart and ministered to us was first through the youth camps, what took place. But not only for the kids that came that were on the Navajo Reservation, but the kids that came to help put the camp on. We only had one that get, got baptized among the Navajo. And I'm glad for the one, but I thought it might be hard. And it's something that they're not used to, and especially when mom and dads aren't there and family's not there. So I understood that. But there were eight of the teenagers that came out there with that group that rededicated their lives and got baptized first time and so I thank God amen for that and then another time the the pictures of the Hogans that's you see there the octagon shaped buildings that's a Hogan representing the homes in which they lived in there were a group out there of ladies two men and they started to do a, a painting on them the, the design that you see and all that uh, every morning we'd meet in the cafeteria and uh, I'd have a short devotion and prayer and I don't ma actually know what day it was I think it was later on in that week Tuesday or Wednesday that we were having prayer and there was a lady that was there that had been talking with my wife some and sharing that she was wanting to really get involved in something she really felt God wanted her to do something in ministry she didn't know what and so that morning, we asked for special prayer if anybody had a request. And so she stood up, and that was her request. I, I just I know God's got something for me, but I, I need God to, to, to show me what to do and give me the, you know, give me what everything's needed, you know, that I can be able to do it. And as she started to pray, my wife went over there and started praying with her. And some of the others, we started praying and just praying in there. And everybody's, of course, you know, this is Church of God. This is, you know, Holy Ghost country, you know. <laughs> So when people start speaking in tongues, we just go right along with it. That's great. That's what we want. We want, we need that, amen, on the reservation because uh, that is so needed to have that type of power, you know, that authority over the demonic spirits and powers out there. So my wife was praying with her, and she didn't think much about it, that she was speaking in tongues and going on. Then all of a sudden, I was out there that day watching her and noticed that there was something different about her. And, and she was not the same person she was when she got there on Monday. And I said to her, I started talking to her and, and just finding out some things. And she said, well, I know I've been praying for God to show me what to do and to use me. I don't quite understand what he's going to do yet, but I really don't know what happened this morning. That's never happened before. And God did something I'm just not even really sure of. And I said, i tell you what he did. He filled you with the Holy Ghost. Amen. With the evidence of speaking in tongues, he's empowered you to do what he's going to call you to do. Amen. Glory to God. When what he's called all of us to do, one thing is to be missionaries, to be those that are carrying this gospel, amen, around the world. Amen. Anywhere we can go, we share the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so those were some things that stood out. And I, and I thought about that, you know, a lot of times when teams come out there, they leave just as blessed, and maybe sometimes maybe more blessed. And they say to me, we don't feel like we did justice. I say, oh, yes, you did. The people received it, but then you've also received what God wanted to do with you. Praise the Lord. There's some more pictures real quickly I want to go through. This is the shower area on the campgrounds that's for the boys and girls for youth camps. That door you see right there goes into where the hot water heater is. I remodeled that area, took the hot water heater out, 
didn't have time and the money yet to get a new hot water heater. It's got a big, huge gas hot water heater and 80 gallons. In fact, I think it's 120 gallon, the old style tanks. And uh, so it was still good enough to use and I fixed some things on it, got that all back in where it needed to go and so that's fixed. But the shower areas and both sides are terrible. I mean, they are terrible. We've got a group coming out at the end of July. I was hoping it could be before youth camps, but it'll be after youth camp. And uh, they're going to remodel. We're fixing to gut those things out. They're going to have brand new bathrooms. And so when they show up again the following year, they're going to think they're at the Holiday Inn. Amen. They're, go they're going to have some beautiful bathrooms. And uh, I'm excited about it uh, because that's my goal is to when the Indian people come to that campground, so that facilities, they are going to be proud that they're part of the Church of God, amen, swim ministries, and this is their campgrounds, and this is where they come when they need help. And that's really what it is. Uh, we, we're there for them. We're, we're there to reach out to them. And I've often thought, how can we show them that we really care and we want to help if our facilities aren't taken care of like they need to be? Amen. And that through that, they can see that we do care. And that we're there for a purpose and a reason. And that's for them. It's not about us. It's not about me. It's not about Bishop Sam Sawyer. You've seen, there's nothing about us. A white man's religion, they say sometimes. It has nothing to do with that. But it has all to do with them and God. Amen. That God would minister to their hearts and to their lives. Praise the Lord. Go on. There's the canteen. This is the outside tabernacle the fireplace you've seen some of the things that's what there 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 is that's got some more work that needs to be done and this is our little house right there got all the windows replaced new trim up around them facial definitely needing especially on that back side it's so rotted and falling apart and the rot out there isn't a rot like you have here in florida where wood rots because of moisture rots out there because it dries out just starts falling apart um, it's just all dry and just crumbles and and it has no moisture uh, but that's the home at the one far end where you see it, the far end, that's where we wanted to add that little, you know, carport area. Let's go back to the next one, the, the, the worker's dorm. Uh, that's the worker's dorm there. That's where groups can come and stay. Behind the worker's dorm, you can't really see it in that picture, and I didn't forgot to put one up on there, but back behind that, up towards that mesa is where Prayer Mountain is, where we have a place where there's a cross and there's two other crosses. Uh, that are lit up at night and you actually can see them from the interstate. Um, one of the things we're talking about and we're going to try to find out what it would cost is on each side of the interstate. It's our property, so we want to put billboards up that say you've gone through, you're going through the Church of God uh, ministry. Well, I don't know how we're going to phrase it. And you're being prayed for. <laughs> Amen. People see it. I mean, some they're going to see knowing that we care that uh, we're there for them and we're there for those that travel through even. I, I'm just believing God can touch them. Um, God can minister to them. Praise the Lord. This is the other building. This is the trading post, the one up front. That's right on Route 66. This is where the trading post, the original trading post that was there. it has been some things done that's remodeled, a little adding on that's been done, but it needs a lot of work. It needs a lot of work. And we're hoping and praying that God will bring the right people, those that want to help us with it, and wanting to maybe turn this into a, a bed and breakfast. There will be four areas where families could come and stay. We would have a central kitchen area. It's a huge area that's in there, a huge dining room area. Uh, but the other areas then they would have where they could stay in the, and they'd have some room. Each one would have restrooms. And uh, the facility then could be used that way for those that are traveling through. Bring a little revenue into swim ministries. But at the same time, I'm just believing once people get involved, and, and, and I believe this with my heart, that God brings them out there for this reason. They see what's there. They see what's going on and what needs to be done. And they'll be back. They'll be back. I mean, they will come. And we've had them come back. And I've got some more that are coming back this year that were there last year. Can you just thank God again for what's happening there, SWIM, Southwest Indian Ministries, and what's going to take place. Our goal is the harvest, reaching the harvest, whatever the cost, whatever the cost. I believe we can meet that need because we have a God that owns everything. 
He owns it. Amen. And he can do it. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. He's here. I, since I've come up to this, I, I've been feeling his presence, and, and, I, and I want to preach, and I'm going to preach, but I want him also to have his way. I want him to, to know, and I, I can't preach without him. I can make a fool of myself <laughs> either way, but I'd rather make a fool under the anointing. <laughs> Amen. Then, because that's what it says preaching is what foolishness unto those that really don't understand. Um, but I'm glad that we understand, and it's not foolishness. It's the power of God. It's what God wants for us. And uh, I want to talk about something this morning that I've been dealing with throughout the churches I've been going to. It's something God laid upon my heart. And every time I've gone to the churches, He changes it in some direction and area. So it kind of makes me know that. He's definitely speaking to you. He's speaking to us this morning. I've been dealing with and talking about God's plan and what God's plan has always been. Um, I also have been using the theme, I am who I am because I am tells me I am. Amen. Uh, quit listening to the world. Quit listening to the bad news. Quit listening to the Democrat Party, the Republican Party, to all the garbage that's out there on the, the Internet and everywhere else on Facebook. I, I'm getting to a place where I don't even want to look at Facebook because it's nothing more than a place where everybody's opinion is being brought forth sometimes and has nothing to do with giving praise really unto God. And some of it's just getting worse and worse. And I'm thinking, well, Lord, if I need it to keep in touch with people, you just direct me even in that. Um, but I, I look and I see some of these things that are taking a rent to place around the world, and it's almost like we feel like God's forsaken us, God's forgot about us. And within the church, we're, we come to church, we're here, COVID, we shut down, we almost felt like we were forced to. Uh, we tried not to have church, but can I say the devil lost, really? He lost. Uh, maybe they didn't get together, but there was more gospel preached over the Internet than it's ever been preached before. Amen. It went out across the world. Amen. People heard about Jesus Christ. And so, but the plan then for the church, for God's plan, is still the same. We are, we're to carry this gospel. We're, we're to take this forth unto all that uh, are around or unto everyone that we can. And so I want to start in Genesis chapter 1, verse 27. I want to talk about God's plan this morning. God's plan. Aren't you glad it's His plan? It's God's plan. It's, it's not David Addis' plan. It's, it's, it's not your pastor's plan. It's, it's none of your plan. You can't pat yourself on the shoulder for it. Uh, it's not yours. It's God's. And God said this. So God created man in His own image. Say that with me. His own image. Say it again. His own image image <laughs> that should make you want to shout just that right there yeah. hallelujah in the image of God created he him in Genesis chapter 2 verse 7 he says this and the Lord God formed man and woman or, or, or actually formed man and of the dust of the ground and breathe into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. This is something God has put in my spirit. And something that I've been really praying about. And seeking the Lord for. And I wrote a little comment right here. Thus God started his plan for mankind. To be his temple. To be his temple. And filled with his glory. In his image, we are created. And as his temple created in his image, I really believe then we need to be imagers of God and who he is. Not imagers of self or man, but imagers of God, the one who created us. In his image, but yet not all of the ways we didn't resemble God because we were flesh and blood. We were created and made a body. 
But God is spirit and therefore He does not exist in flesh and blood or body. When we look at this and we see that man, Adam, the first man that was created, God, that He did image God and there were some ways that He imaged God. And, and I thought about that, and I began to think about that. Just think for a second and think for a moment. In the time that man was created, there was a time, a brief moment in time. It wasn't very long. I really don't know how long, but I don't think it was really long, that man lived in perfect harmony with God. <laughs> that excites me. Uh, I'm going to get ahead of myself a little bit here because that, me, that, that lets me know something. I've got something to shout about when I read that because and see that because we're going to have that again. We're going to have it again. Amen. The devil didn't win. Amen. The devil's a liar. Amen. And one day we're going to rejoice in heaven. We're going to be with him forevermore. And we're going to be in harmony. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And I, it excites me to think that we have a God like that. Amen. You know, see, Adam was perfect health. He was sinless. Uh, he was not subject to death. He was God's perfect temple. God's made. He glorified God through that which God created because it imaged the Creator. It brought praise and glory unto Him. He went on in Genesis chapter uh, 128 and He said, And God said unto them, uh, and and, and and God blessed them and said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth, subdue it, and have dominion over all things. God's plan from the beginning, God's plan, and I, I just want to stress this to us this morning, and I really believe God wants us to understand His plan, that God's plan was that we were to be His temple. Amen. The temple of God. That plan didn't last long. Sin entered into the heart of man, into the temple of man, amen, to where no longer was God able to really dwell in man. He came down in the midst of them, but he was not in them and came, and came to a place to where man was, of course we know, he was kicked out of the garden. He was no longer there. He was cursed in the ground that was, was cursed. And it came to a place to where now man was in the temple still, but not really... God's plan, where he was at. So I'm going to kind of hurry up here and go through this next couple of parts because 25 years, 2,000, and actually 2,500 years later, God instructed his people through Moses at Mount Sinai to construct a transportable tabernacle in Israel where they were used this place as a place of sacrifice and worship on their journey through the wilderness. One sacrifice and prayer was made, by, uh, made to God God would honor their sacrifice and prayer, and His presence and His glory would fill the temple. The people would fall down and worship God. They would give praise back unto God. God's glory with man, His temple, but not in the way that God really wanted it to be from the beginning, simply was that which was done through sacrifice now, through sin offerings, through that which they had to present you know, when they came unto God. For his glory to show up. For him to be there. God has always wanted his temple to be filled with his glory. Amen. God has always wanted. And you just, you can write, you can write it down. God has always wanted his temple to be filled with his glory. Amen. 440, uh, 440 years later, God accepted Solomon's sacrifice, burnt offerings, and prayer as Solomon dedicated the temple at Jerusalem as a dwelling place of God. Not, an, not only for Solomon, uh, as a, well, I'm getting, let me get a little water. See, Solomon knew something. He wanted to build a temple, but he knew that also that no one building could hold the presence of God. That his presence was beyond being controlled or held in one place. Amen. But that the temple was brought forth. And the Bible talks about that when Solomon in, in, in Second Chronicles chapter 7 and 1, it says, Now when Solomon had made the end of praying, 
the fire came down from heaven and consumed the burnt offering and the sacrifice, and the glory of the Lord filled the house. And on to say in chapter 7, verse 12, and the, glory, and the Lord appeared unto Solomon by night and said unto him, I have heard thy prayer and have chosen this place to myself as a house of sacrifice and prayer. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory, glory is getting me excited. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Because all of a sudden now we come to a place where there's something else that we, well, actually in the, the wilderness tabernacle it was there, but here now we see even more that it talks and it begins to deal with the Holy of Holies. Amen. A chamber in which the presence of God was manifested. The temple was all about God's presence being manifested, and when it was, the people bowed themselves with their face to the ground and worshipped and praised the Lord God, saying, He is good, for His mercy endureth forever. Amen. Holy, holy, holy is He. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. God wants to fill, and I'm going to, I'm going to say this a few different times, God wants to fill His temple with His glory. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let's move forward now to the time of Jesus and his promise. When he left this world, he would send the Holy Spirit to dwell in those that followed and believed in him as Lord and Savior. Amen. God's presence would move from the man-made temple in Jerusalem to the God-made temple called man. Woo. <laughs> glory, glory, glory. Your body, as a Christian, becomes the temple of a living God through His Son, Jesus Christ. Jesus, the one, as we are the believers who follow and accepted Him, true followers, uh, we are the ones then, really, and I, and I want to stress this, true followers, those that really believe who He is, those that are serving Him, those that are worshiping Him, those that are calling upon His name, those that have accepted what Jesus Christ has done upon the cross we really have been and we still are the temple of an almighty God. Amen. Hallelujah. We're the temple of God. In fact, uh, when we think about, let me see, did I go too many pages? No, okay. And when we think about the temple, one thing uh, about this uh, as a dwelling place of God, when you look at the temple, and, and this is what I wanted to kind of get to then, when we look at the temple and we see the temple, we can look at four areas that it talks about. There was a purpose. There was a shape, there was a form, and there was an activity. Amen? And so with God's help in this last part of this message, I want you to pray with me. That God would help us to let God use us as a purpose, <laughs> as a shape, as a form, and an activity of the image of God. Equal shut time. Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord, for what you've done and what you have paid for on the cross of Calvary. Heavenly Father, through your Son, Jesus Christ, who paid the price, amen, that we could be called sons and daughters of God, that you are Abba Father, that you're in this place. Lord, I do pray, Lord, that you would put me and hide me behind the cross, that they wouldn't see me but they would recognize and understand that it's you that speaks to us today, that you are here in this place, that you're in our midst, and you also are inside those that believe. We are your temple. The Bible says, Know ye not that you are the temple of the Holy Spirit, that you are the temple of God? Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you for that, and we praise you, hallelujah, Lord, that we are your temple to be used for your kingdom and for your glory. <clears throat> praise the Lord. Hallelujah. When we talk about the temple then, we'll begin to look at the temple. The first temple we talked about earlier and we began to look at it was the creation of man. The creation of man and God went into a lot of detail of what was done. When you see the detail of what was given for them to build the, the tabernacle that would travel and transport, there was a lot of detail. There was a lot that he did in calling them to do Solomon's temple, there was things that were supposed to be done. And here was, there was order that was given and, and how they were to bring their sacrifice and what they were to bring, what they were to do. But now we see ourselves as the temple.
But in that temple, we also got to re realize that we are the temple. And I'm not talking about this building. I'm not talking about a church shape or a church form like this. Amen. I'm talking about the church. Amen. Those that are blood, uh, blood washed. Amen. Uh, sin washed away. Uh, those that are have been. How do I want to say that? Uh, they got salvation. <laughs> I mean, they've accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and the uh, Lord and Savior of their life. They are now a temple, and this temple is called what? It's, it is called the church. Amen. It, it's called the church, and we have a head, Jesus Christ, and, and we are the body. Amen. And so we are the temple of the living God. Amen. He, he dwells in us. When we come together then, amen, we come together for a purpose. Amen. And when we come together and we unite in that purpose, amen, and we unite in what God's called us to do, to be image bearers, just think what takes place in the church. What happens? It's like we felt this morning. It's like we're feeling right now. God's in this place and his image is being taken and transformed out unto those that are around us. We feel his presence. We know that he's spirit. So we feel that we, we don't see him but yet in our spirit we feel that and we know that he's here he's in this place he he brings some say the goosebumps he brings the, the the little feeling that you get amen and it's not all about feeling but i thank god when he does show up amen and we know and we feel his presence in the place when his glory fills the temple amen the church amen praise god amen the dwelling place Amen. We are called to be. Amen. And in that dwelling place, we are to be image bearers. Because God created us in His image. In His image. Okay? And so we have a purpose. Amen. Genesis 1 and 28, we already read this. For God said unto them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and, and have dominion over it. Amen. God's plan, listen to me, listen. God's plan was for the temple to grow. God never intended it just to be Adam and Eve. He wanted them to grow. He wanted them to subdue the land and the earth and to grow and to multiply. Amen. If God's plan would have started out and sin hadn't entered in, that's what it would have done. It would have continued and everyone that was created and made through, I shouldn't say created, who was born, you know, after Adam and Eve, would have came to a place to where there would have been no, there, they wouldn't have been in sin. It would have been just like Adam and Eve. They would have been perfect. They would have been perfection, amen, because there was no sin. There was, they would have been taking what he said to do and being fruitful and multiplying and replenishing the earth. Amen. But when we look at this and that we see that the temple was to grow, it's to grow both spiritually and in number. Amen. God wants it to grow spiritually. And praise God. And I hear people say this sometimes. And, it, and I know what they're saying. They say, well, I thank God for our, our church. And it's maybe just a small and little. And, and, you know, but we know everybody. And we can pray for everybody. And, and, and you know, they're spiritual and everything. And what they're saying and doing. But yet, they're really not believing God for growth. Really not believing God for a place to where they multiply. And he told us in the beginning we're to multiply. Amen. Glory to God. I think sometimes we look at this and we forget what he's dealing with here in this beginning. It's not dealing with mankind as a man who is now what we see in this world full of sin. But a man that was created in his image. Amen. That was bringing glory and praise unto God. Amen. Hallelujah. And that's what he wanted to continually have grow and to be fruitful and to multiply. He wanted that. Man, he wanted that. And he still wants that, amen, from you and I and from the church. That we'll grow not only spiritually, but we grow in number. For it's not just a building that we need to have that grow. And our buildings become more beautified. We use more things and we have this and that and all these types of things. God wants that church to understand. His church, to, we're united in a cause. And the cause that we're united in is for His glory to be manifested in the temple. Amen. In this place so that we can be about the Father's business. Amen. And the Father's business is all about souls. It's all about people coming to know who Jesus Christ is because his, the Father's business then is really bringing us back to a place again to where we understand we're the temple and that the temple's to grow and that we're to reach out to others.
believers that they also can be part of this temple. Amen. They can also be part of this body. Amen. They can come to know Jesus Christ and Lord and Savior of their life. He doesn't want any to, to lose out. He would, he would, his prayer is that all would come to know Him as Lord and Savior. All to be part of the temple. All to have the presence of God. All to have the image of God being manifested through their lives. Amen. As they live and they serve and they, they walk for Jesus. Amen. And, and that we're growing spiritually in number. We're multiplying. We're fruitful. We're fruitful. And we talk about being fruitful. His mercy endures forever. I'm so thankful. I'm th- I tell you what. I don't feel like sometimes I have the right to even preach or be up here. But it's His mercy that endures. And one of the things I believe God is speaking to the church once again is this. In these last days, we need to be fruitful. And not fruitful in man's ways. Not fruitful in a way that we do whatever we can do to try to create a number or a multitude. Hear me, hear me this morning. Churches that can run in the thousands, but it's more about their lights and their smoke and everything else and their their decorations and and everything that goes on and has really nothing to do whatsoever with the, the fruitfulness of God, the mercy of God, His grace, His salvation, his love, amen, that is being portrayed. And that is one area that I really believe God is calling us once again. I like what it says, if my people will humble themselves and pray. Humble themselves and pray. We need God's fruit once again to be that which is being poured out upon the church people, people that come. For those that need help, those that are coming because they need Jesus Christ. Let that fruit that is supposed to be what we have in God, imaging God, be that which we use, amen, to minister to their hearts and to their lives. Imaging God, amen, and who he is. The next thing I, it talks about is a shape. Um, in the name of Jesus, there is a shape. Uh, the shape, again, and I've already talked a little bit about it, it's this church. It's a building. It's this but it's not just the church building, it's us. And I've already talked about this. I'm not going to take a long time. But it talks about that the church has been empowered. Amen. Because we are the church and that there is a place. If you want to go to Ephesians chapter 1, 16 to 23, I'm not going to read all that. But it just simply deals with Jesus letting us know. And it deals with a place of, of, of the, the apostle was writing here and, and wanting us to know that, that he had been given all power that his ability that he had been given is for us then. It's not just what he has, but we have it because what? We're his body. (laughs) Amen. And so all that authority that has been given unto him, we've got that same authority. And so as a church, as the shape of God, it's time, it's time once again that uh, the child of God comes to a place to where we begin to take charge we begin to subdue what God's told us to subdue to take you know have the authority and power that God's given us amen and stand up as men and women of God amen under that full authority that's been given to us through Jesus Christ amen as the church of a living God amen as a church the body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ amen to not be uh, intimidated by the devil the world or anything that's going around us standing firm flat-footed bold with our heads held high knowing that we are children of God amen and what we have is power amen we've got the power of God and we've got that amen in us it's a shape amen that God wants us to portray unto this world. We're not a bunch of weaklings. The church isn't a place for just the outcasts and nobodies. That that's all they know to do. And they, 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 they're not educated to do anything else. They just come to church. No, church is a place for those that come that need and understand a Savior. His name is Jesus Christ. But it's also a place to where we're empowered by God. And our shape now isn't some weak 
defeated foe, but we're mighty, amen, shoulder to shoulder, uh, you know, breastplate to breastplate, arms linked together, amen, going forth, amen, as the children of God into a world that needs Jesus Christ, standing our ground, holding our ground, amen, not giving up, not backing and going forward, but reaching forward unto a world, amen, that needs Jesus Christ, not holding back, amen, this shape that God's called us to be, but to go forward, amen, mightily in the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord. We are His church. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I'm glad I'm part of His church. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We're His church. Glory. The temple has a form. Okay. We also have a form. This one's easy. You should all know what this means. What kind of form do we have? I hope it's this. It's in the image of Him who created us. And he's the only one that can have this given to his name and to his honor. Is God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. And is this fact. He is holy. <laughs> Amen. He is holy. Amen. I still believe in holiness. Amen. I still believe there's a form in which we have to hold true to. And that's holiness. Amen. A people that are separated from this world. No longer the same. Amen. Because of a holy God. Amen. And what he's done through his son Jesus Christ. And we're not ashamed to be holy. We're not ashamed to turn away from the things of this world. And proclaim those things that we have got from God and received from the Lord. Amen. We're not ashamed. Amen. To hold our banner high. Amen. And who Jesus Christ. Christ is, amen. He is our Lord. He is our Savior. And we serve a holy God, amen. A, a holy God. The angels cry, holy, holy, holy is He. Hallelujah. And, and the form that we live, amen, before this world needs to be a holy form. Amen. Glory to God. I still believe that we need to live that way. And, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to probably get in trouble here, but I, 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 I'm a little old-fashioned. I still think we need to sometimes dress that way. We still need to talk that way. Holy. Amen. It's amazing sometimes when I get in groups, and I've, I've been in groups with pastors, and, and I won't say any names, who talk about the cruises they've gone on and some of the things they've done on those cruises. And I'm thinking, my God, what happened to holiness? What happened to with us really standing up for who we are? Nobody knows what integrity is. I think God's wanting some people with integrity to really stand, amen, for who they are. We are holy. We are a holy people. Amen. That's what God created us and made us to be. The last thing I want to speak real quickly about is that there has to be activity. The temple is all about activity. Activity. If you've been listening any to Dr. Hill, our general overseer in these last couple of years, he's been talking about finishing the Great Commission. And that's really what the temple's all about. It's about fulfilling that Great Commission, finishing it in Matthew 28, 16 through 20. And it says there, when the 11 disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. Then they saw him, they worshipped him. When they saw him, they worshipped him. When they saw him, they worshipped him. But some doubted. Okay, you're going to have some. When Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Therefore, go. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to observe everything I've commanded you. And surely, I will, I am with you always. Hallelujah. To fill the Great Commission, to fill the Great Commission, to carry this gospel, this gospel truth, God in his image to a world that really doesn't want anything to do with him. But if we'll carry this image the way that God wants us to carry it, he says, I will draw them unto me. Amen. I'll be the one that begins to deal with their heart. Don't worry about if they're going to listen or not or receive. You just do what we're called to do. 
Let's just be involved in the activity of the Great Commission. I mean, reaching souls, reaching out to those that are lost. I look at your bulletin. You've got things that you're doing. And reaching out to the law isn't always just about preaching this. It's being Jesus' hands and feet. It, it's being the one sometimes that takes food to the hungry. It's it ones that help build buildings. It's those that sometimes put food into a food pantry. We went by it this morning. I said, hey, there's a food pantry right there. And, and, and I see this. I said, praise God. They're even involved in that. Praise the Lord. But we're involved. We're active, amen, involving ourselves in the harvest, involving ourselves in the Great Commission, reaching out. And I like what it talks about, though. He was talking to the disciples, and he calls us that we're to do something else. We are to make disciples. Again, we're talking about growth. We're talking about church growth. We're talking about spiritual growth. Amen. This is part of the activity that has to take place within the church. Amen. It has to be that which, amen, comes from our Heavenly Father, from our, our Lord Jesus Christ, from the Holy Spirit that guides and directs us, amen, to where we can be those that are making disciples, amen, of men, amen, that they can go out also and make disciples and that we can see the increase amen that God wants in these last days that is going to take this world by storm I still believe we're going to have a revival that this world is not going to be able to handle or understand or take place and it's going to come from those that know that this is what God's called us to be his temple so that his glory could fill it amen and when God's glory is manifested those around us they're going to see some may doubt some may not want to accept and believe but praise God to those those that are wanting to hold on and believe what he's got in store, glory to God, there's going to come a greater time than even revival. There's going to come a time when the Bible talks about in the twinkling of an eye, amen, we're going to be changed, we're going to be raptured up out of this old world, and we're going to have an eternity with our Heavenly Father, our God, amen, who created us in the beginning to be what he's called us to be in these last days, amen, a temple of his presence, a temple of of his presence. One of the things when I began to study and, and look into some of this, and I'm not a scholar, I don't know all the things that went on with the temples, but I began to cry and pray unto the Lord. And the Lord just began to deal with me more on a personal basis about some things. And I began to pray. I said, Lord, when we talk about the Great Commission and, and feeling the Great Commission, you, you, Lord, you're my Savior, you're my, you're my Master, you're my salvation, you're my Lord. And he, and he kept just dealing with me, then, then tell others. That's what he said. That's what he told me. Tell others. As the church, the temple, the activities, tell others. How do we tell others? Through prayer. How's your prayer life? Through worship? How's our worship? Through praise? What's our praise like? Through healings? Through miracles? Through His power? He wants all these things to be that which He talks about. And actually, He told even the disciples, These things and greater things ye shall do in my name. Because of why? We're His temple. And we need the glory of God if that's going to happen. Amen. And I'll go back to this then again because sometimes it's going to cause us to a place to where then we're going to have to do this. Church, hear me. We're going to have to do this. And maybe more times than we really would think we ought to, but we're going to have to do this and humble ourselves and pray so that we can be the temple of God that He wants us to be so that His presence can be manifested amongst His people. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Could you stand with me and let's pray. You see, that's one of the areas on the reservation. I'm praying and believing God for the church to see and to recognize out there. A lot of the pastors are struggling so much, but part of their struggle is not God's, God's not the problem. Church, God's not the problem. He's the creator. And he's called us to do something to just to image him. And if we'll image him, he'll do the rest. <laughs> he does the rest. But some of them out there try to image so many other things. They try to image sometimes those who come out there. They try to image 
another uh, minister. They try to image sometimes themselves. It's more about themselves than it is really the form of God. And to where church, and, and I hate to say this, I've been thankful that I've been in Florida for these last couple of months because I've been in church, and I know I've been in church. There's times when we go to church on the reservation, and my wife and I, we got to, after church, sit there and encourage ourselves and pray because we've been tore down and more discouraged than uplifted because of what was happening and what's taking place in the church. A place of, oh, me, despair, COVID this, COVID that, how terrible it is. No praise unto God hardly whatsoever. And I'm thinking, God, manifest yourself. Manifest yourself. Manifest yourself. <laughs> Amen. So that people will see, they will know. That you are who you are. You are the great I am. Amen. You are Jehovah Jireh. <laughs> you are our creator, our God, our savior, our Lord. You are in whom we put our trust. Hallelujah. You are our strength. You are our power. Hallelujah. You are our praise. You are our worship. Amen. You are our, our miracle. You are all that we have need of in this life. In this life that I live. I can live it full of joy and peace. And, and have a song upon my heart. Amen. I am a child of God. I will have no fear. Hallelujah. For He has chosen me to win. Amen. Hallelujah. And proclaim that to the loudest voice we can to a world. Amen. That needs Jesus Christ. Amen. That needs Jesus Christ. Amen. He's our joy. And He is our peace. Amen. Proclaiming that. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, thank You, Lord, for Your presence in this place. Thank You, Lord, that we are Your temple. Thank You, Lord, we are called to bring praise and glory and honor to Your holy name. And as we do what You've asked us to do and called us to do, that You will do Your part. You will do your part. There's no doubt in my mind whatsoever. The Bible talks about that when Solomon did what he did, the priests couldn't even go in the next that time. They couldn't even go into the temple and do their priestly duties because the glory of the Lord was so strong in that place. And I thought about it. Wouldn't it be so wonderful when we come to church sometimes before we ever even get here? Because we've already come in for one cause, one purpose. We've already been praying as the body. We've already been praying, seeking the Lord for the service. And as you begin to walk in, all you can do is just fall on the floor and begin to worship Him because His glory and His presence is so strong. Because it's, it's not about what we've got planned. It's not about what we want to do. Oh, we can do that. And praise God, we do have that happen. He allows it to. But I really believe sometimes that's really what He wants us to come, to, to come in as, as His people already expecting already expecting for his glory to fill this place fill this place Lord fill this place and then I had one other thought and then we're going to pray if they couldn't go in and do what they needed to do as God's temple us wouldn't it be wonderful if we would just understand that that same presence, that same power that God has, that same glory, as it is in us, can do something else. If they couldn't do good, just think how much more the enemy can't do evil. <laughs> hmm, hallelujah. Keep the devil out. Keep the glory in. Amen. Hallelujah. Keep the devil out. Keep the glory in. Amen. He can't come on into a place that's filled with God's praise and His glory. Amen. He may try. He may come and push against you. He may do some things to make you to where you think that, uh, you know, what's God doing? I'll tell you what He's doing. He's just wanting you to keep the glory going. Amen. Keep the praise. Amen. Going unto Him. Amen. Because where the glory is, Satan cannot abide. Amen. Hallelujah. He'll have to leave. He'll have to leave. Amen. He cannot do His work, His lies in the midst of those that are full of His glory. Amen. Heavenly Father, my prayer is this for us this morning. 
for this pastor and his lovely wife and for their ministry. God bless them. I pray for his healing of his hip, Lord. I pray that you would use him. But, Lord, I, I see what this church has been doing and how it's been reaching out in missions, how it's reaching out to their community and what they're doing. For the presence that I've felt ever since I came in this place this morning, through their music, through the song, through the communion this morning, God, through all that's been done. Lord, you've been here. You're in this place. And, Lord, I pray, Lord, right now that if there's those that are here that maybe need to come to a place of an altar of prayer, that they wouldn't be afraid that they would come, that they would turn to you this morning, that they would cry out unto you, whatever the need may be. Amen. You're not here to punish. You're not here to make us feel like we're losers. We're here because we need your glory. We need you, amen, to fill the temple. We need you to do a work in our lives so that we can be used about the Father's business. Amen. We can be involved in the harvest. We can reach out to souls, to mankind. We can be part of the Great Commission. And Lord, I pray that this morning. Use us. Use us. Ikushatai, use us. For your kingdom and for your glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If there's anyone who would like prayer this morning, I will pray with you. It's not gonna, I, I don't ever stop a service where I don't pray. If there's those that want to pray and want it to come, I, would, I will pray. If you're needing healing, if you're needing God to minister to you, just you can come on. We'll pray. We'll believe the Lord this morning. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, amen. Come on. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. He's able. He's here. He's in this place. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many this morning are really needing some healing in your body? Amen. We're needing healing. How many knows he's still the healer? Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.